Hello, my name's Catherine and this is the Midweek Thought. I'm going to speak on the subject of anxiety. So why don't you grab a cup of tea or coffee and a seat and let's explore it together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray the prayer of Moses. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Amen. Recently, I read out a notice from Eldon in church about the subject for the March magazine, anxiety. And it got me thinking, how much time do we spend worrying, not just in the middle of the night, but during our daily lives? And we're probably doing it more than ever in this pandemic. But firstly, I have to state that although we use words like worry and anxiety interchangeably, the two are apparently very different psychological states. According to Psychology Today, worry tends to be more focused on thoughts in our heads, while anxiety is more visceral in that we feel it throughout our bodies. But having said that, Today, I'd like to make it clear that I'm exploring the more general topic of worry, and I will use the words like worry and anxiety interchangeably. For those psychologists out there, I apologize. Anxiety is a natural human emotion. The dictionary terms it as a feeling of worry, nervousness or unease about something with an un uncertain outcome. So, like all human emotions, it can be both a positive and a negative force in our lives. It can energise us to act in order to avoid danger or prepare for an event so that it is a success rather than a failure. However, we normally associate anxiety as a more negative force in our lives, which can have the opposite effect of energising us and may leave us paralysed and frightened instead. Psychologists reckon that about 95% of all we worry about never happens. So, of the other fifth, uh, for 5% that's left, four out of five times, things turn out better than we anticipated, including a lot of outright blessings. In the end, only 1% of all the bad we think will happen actually does. And of this, it's rarely as bad as we feared. As Mark Twain commented, I've been through some horrible things in my life, a few of which actually happened. This is probably why Jesus encourages us not to give too much importance to worrying about the future. It's such a waste of our time and energy. Let's look at Matthew 6, starting at verse 25. There's quite a few verses in this section of Matthew, so I've praised it a bit. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. Can any of you by worrying add a single hour to their life? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I don't know about you, but I would agree with that last statement particularly. Each day has enough trouble of its own, and that's whether we're facing a pandemic or not. It's just the trouble may look a bit different. During the lockdown, we find ourselves in a very different scenario to the life we had before the pandemic struck. For me, the life I lived before COVID was lived at a pace I can't even think about now without wanting to lie down in a darkened room. How I managed to keep up with my schedule, I can't even imagine now I'm stuck at home for weeks on end. Did I have time to worry and be anxious? Well, yes, I managed to fit that in as well. A lot of anxiety stemmed from wondering if I could fit in everything that my, um, my timetable suggested I should fit in. Since the pandemic, life is lived at a much slower pace for me, 
although I'm still working and very involved in church, as we are currently doing it. I realise that it isn't everyone's experience. You may be face facing a much busier life, with children at home needing to be homeschooled while you are trying to keep working, or you may be a key worker, busier than ever. But hopefully, what I say will strike a chord with everyone, whatever circumstances we're facing. So, in my slower paced reality, do I worry as much as I did before? Or like the Beatles song, do all my worries now seem so far away? Has all my anxiety just evaporated? Well, no, of course not. As I say, anxiety is a natural human emotion. When Jesus talked about it, he described what pe people naturally worry about. Having enough money, having a roof over our heads, having food on the table, having warm clothes in cold weather. He doesn't deny these needs. He's not saying we shouldn't work hard or do not have the right to such things, but he shows that he understands our fears and emphasizes that we don't face these issues alone. Your heavenly father knows that you need them. And if we understand how much God loves us, if we really get it, then there's no more need to worry. Yes, there's a need to do our part for all these things, i.e. to work or to seek work, to donate to charities that help the poor and the needy, or to become a volunteer at a food banker, or support our NHS by sticking to the COVID rules. But we don't need to spend our nights worrying about it. But you may say, it's all very well telling us not to worry, but how do we actually do that? Well, firstly, I would recommend that we immerse ourselves in the Bible and stand on God's word. There are at least 365 mentions in it about not being afraid, because funnily enough, God knows what we're like. So we're spoilt for choice. 1 Peter 5, 7 seems to sum it up. Call, uh, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And my favorite, Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We need to turn to God's word and stand on its promises rather than focus on the cause of our anxiety, whether that's the pandemic or anything else. We need to remember also that it's not our circumstances, but how we view them that robs us of peace. Focusing on them just causes more anxiety because circumstances constantly change. We're in the lockdown, we're out of it, the vaccines are happening, and yet our hospitals are at breaking point and people are still dying, and it hasn't changed our situation. We're in work, we're out of work, and struggling to make ends meet, and possibly feeling that everything's spinning out of control. Just remember, God never changes. He is our rock and hiding place, and nothing ever spins out of his control. Peace and worry are mutually exclusive. God is either the object of our trust or just a part-time helper we call on when we can't handle things on our own. When we begin to see God as playing the major role in our lives and us the minor one, we'll begin to find the peace which can so easily elude us. Secondly, we need to put Jesus's words into practice. He says in verse 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So what ways can, in what ways can we do that? Well, we can spend time with God and other Christians. Some of the ways we can do, uh, we can do that can be through watching or listening to the Sunday services on YouTube, listening to Christian podcasts or, and radio, reading Christian books, there are at least two reading groups at church if you're not sure where to start. Join the men's curry night or the God's Girls events, or we could join a home group if we're not already in one. 
Paul warned us not to give up meeting together because he knew how isolated and inward looking we can become if we're cut off from the family of God. Thirdly, if, if we're struggling with anxiety and worry, we should confide in a trusted Christian friend or possibly one of the ministry team. Because as the old saying goes, a problem shared is a problem halved. Speaking about it with someone we trust can help us to get things into perspective and also help us to feel supported. I read recently that discouragement is both dangerous and contagious. It is one of the devil's most potent tools because it mutes truth and muffles hope. Let's not let worry get the better of us, but forge ahead with God, trusting in his love and protection. And as Paul says in Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Amen. Thank you for joining me. I pray that you will have a peaceful and hope-filled week.